Hi, it's Leslie, Married at First Sight, and we're just jumping right in with Lauren and Orion. Orion, not Orion, not Onion, Orion. And you know, they say they used to hit, like his nickname was like Onion because he had so many layers. Well, my first impression of him was that I did not like him. And then I started to like him a little bit, but now as these layers are getting peeled off, I like him less and less. But you know what? Maybe I'm in the wrong, and maybe I'm just reading the wrong, but I am starting to not like him at all. But let's just jump right in to how it's going with Lauren and Orion. Last week was a rough one for them. They were getting all snuggly and everything, and then they found themselves in a deep conversation about their cultures, Lauren being a black woman and Orion being an Indian. Everything seemed fine, and they've been so chummy and all until uh, Lauren uh, said this. I've used terms that when I was younger that I didn't even know were derogatory. Redskin? No, I don't think I've ever used that language, but like, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I've actually never said, I don't even know what redskin means, honestly. Oh, I do. I just looked at your face. I didn't. That I didn't, was a little I'm rough. sorry. That was a little, I'm sorry. That was, that was rough. rough. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, a little bit. Well, that's about right when it started to go south because that comment did not sit well with Orion. And Lauren sees it instantly. She sees this whole demeanor change and everything, and she starts to try to, like, talk like an adult, like, try to understand, like, what, you know, she was joking, like, what's the problem, you know. Lauren's starting to get the feeling that something has gone seriously awry, and he is much more upset than he's letting on. And then she asks him, and he says this. <laughs> I don't know, you know, things like that. It's just, that's not a joke. Hmm. I'm actually glad we had this talk. Yeah. I'm glad. I don't know how you feel, but... I'm a little heated. Ooh, alrighty then. And, and this is where I need somebody's help to tell me if I'm just completely wrong. Because where I saw it, if it was, if I was on the receiving end of that, the first thing I would think about was what were their intentions. And her intentions were not bad. She did not mean to offend him. And you have to take that into account. And he just, he didn't. Like he, and he had even said earlier on that he's said um, bad things about her nationality ignorantly when he was younger and it's like it's all about intentions and if you don't have the mean intentions you have to at least take that into account but he he was not hearing it he felt it reflected badly on her it just makes her look at like he was just like and she was trying to understand and it was just horrible but I feel if the mean intentions are not there that is your moment to educate you alrighty so they're on the struggle bus I never had much hope for them anyway but that night, Lauren slept on the couch. Of course, she went up to bed so he would awaken and she would be there. But I guess she went a little distance from him. And believe me, I would too. And Orion also felt it. So things do feel a bit offbeat. The thing that annoyed me about all this is she did not mean that with the awful intentions of which he took it. And didn't care that she didn't mean it like that. He just, he didn't care. You know, wasn't having it. And it even annoyed me more because then the following day she basically had to continue apologizing and, and reiterating how she would never want him to not feel safe and all the things. And it was just she had to basically eat it continually for the whole following day because she said something that she didn't even mean to be as harsh as, it's, as he took it. I did spend a lot of time just reflecting on what can we do, what can I do to make sure that my husband feels safe and value and seen in this marriage. Ugh. Well, anyway, they survived that little um, ordeal, you know, and they're still trying to get back on and kind of cuddling. They go off the next day and they're on the boat and everything seems fine because she basically sucked it up and ate it all and, you know, he he could continue on because she, she probably I promised that she would never do that again. God forbid. And then they're out to dinner and you could tell it's getting a little... It's getting a little hot and heavy or whatever, and they start, it's so bizarre, talking about sex and all the things and what you would do, and she's just, like, saying it. And it I like, like, skin-to-skin -skin contact. I really enjoyed that. Now I'm at the point where I'm, like, just imagining what it would be like with yeah. you. How does that start? I feel like the foreplay probably starts with fellatio from you. I could see you just jumping right into it. I would say you're right. I am a giver. I was, little, I was uncomfortable. They were obviously not uncomfortable, but me, I'm, you know, a little more prudish, I guess, but whatever. They're talking about getting intimate and when it'll happen and all the kind of things. And he's like, you know, it's been a long time for me. And she's like, oh, how long? And I guess it'd been quite some time for him since he had been intimate with somebody. And then, of course, he 
asked her the same question, how long has it been? And she's like, oh, it's been two months. And he was like, what? And I guess this was completely offending to him. He took it personally, I guess, that I get it made her like less than that she was not worthy of him at that point because he alluded to that he knows his worth, that his worth is more than someone that basically was just with someone and then they're going to be with him, like he was above that. And I don't know, it was kind of weird. And I was like, I don't even know why what you did before you met is even an issue. Certainly in this nonsense, because this is not a normal thing. You know, you just met them. You're going to have a life before the day you go on this freaking show. I mean, it's all crazy. But um, when she said that, and he's like, well, I'm kind of committed. Once I knew I was going to, you know, marry someone, I was committed to you, basically, that he was better than her. And I guess she got in one last uh, roll in the hay before, before this. And then it ended with this. How do you feel that I had sex two months ago? It's not like, like a walking corn ball, <laughs> like. Being honest, uh, it kind of took sex off the table for me. I was like, what? It did? Oh, oh, that's not good, that's not good. Ooh, anyway, and you could see her disapproval of that comment also. All right, what's next? Sex is done. All righty then. So not so good for them, but let's go on to one of my couples that I have a lot more faith in. You know, they're, they're dropping like flies, but I still have confidence that this couple can make a go of it. And that is Emily and Brennan. Emily, for uh, granted, we know she's never had a relationship. They make that abundantly clear. But I tell you, there's something really likable about her. I mean, she she is not high maintenance, and I do like a non high maintenance girl after my own heart. You know, she's just chill. Like she goes with it. You know, and um, is happy and positive. I just I like the two of them. They seem they both have good energy together. Anyway, they go out. Um, like jet skiing above the water, whatever it's called. You know the the. The water shoots you up above the water and you kind of ride up there or whatever. That morning, she had her hair in braids. And I didn't I didn't really get understand what happened. But anyway, horrible, horrible things happened to her hair. She goes out there. She has her hair in braids and she is wounded because she fell out of the shower. I don't know if she was drinking. I'm telling you that drinking is going to come into things. But she is a wounded risk. But she's a trooper. She goes out there with her bad wrist and manages to do this and does it fairly well because it does not look easy to balance up on those little shooting water thingies. Anyway, after that, I don't know what happened, but then they kind of go to the fact that her hair is basically matted and ruined and it's trashed. I don't know if those were, someone tell me, because I obviously with this crummy hair, I can't tell. Are those, was that like extensions? Is that what got all messed up? I don't understand. It was in braids. What happened? I don't understand. That was catastrophic. Any other girl would have been out of their mind and I give props to her for handling it like such a trooper. Anyway, they had to basically cut it out. This whole matted flea nest of a hair thing. Wow. Was that the extensions they were cutting out? Someone tell me in the comments. I am so clueless with this. But, you know, I guess they can fix it. So good for her. I mean... They're doing great. They're doing great. They are my number two couple for making a run at this because the others are on, already on shaky ground. Now let's just go on to Claire and Cameron and they're kind of pulling up the rear but kind of with a little bit of a bullet. They're doing okay. I mean they had a rough rough start. There was no spark, nothing happening between them. They went out on this little date like kind of basically painting, painting each other or whatever and they saw you know Claire got to see Cameron's goofy side and they had fun and I get it's exactly what they needed and Cameron even said this I'm actually super optimistic about our future I agree I totally agree oh well that makes one of us I mean I wouldn't say super optimistic I'm pleasantly encouraged I'm slightly encouraged let's say so they seem like they've turned a corner a little bit and um are getting back in the race of this married thing. So there's still hope. I Not much hope, but there's still a little bit of hope for them. But anyway, they go out all that night and 
if not that I might be mistaken, but I believe that Claire's hand was on Cameron's leg. I was like, what? Could that be? I think so. And I need to go text all my people. Cameron. I was like, oh my God. So they're getting a little more chummy and physical. I think the tips from the other girls about, you know, trying to like be a little more encouraging when he makes the move and stuff. I think that really did a lot for her. And these changes are not missed on Cameron. Happy Cameron. Because he, you know, he wants to get to that, that next step, the physical step. Um, yesterday, there was this, like, sea change between us, where everything was going in one direction, but now things are going in a completely different direction, like changing of the tides, you know? Right. So they're doing okay. I mean, do I think they'll make it? No, I don't, but at least they'll, they'll make it through the end of the show, you know, to at least... You know, they won't they won't blow up in flames before that. You know what? But it, it, that's a coming. The the I think we've been on we've been on Easy Street for a little while with these couples. Um, the shitstorm's coming very soon, I think. But I'm just gonna talk briefly about Becca and Austin, and they're doing so well. There's hardly anything to say. They are my favorite couple. Two super nice people found each other, and they are a perfect match. I mean, props to whoever experts found these two and put them together because they are doing it. And um, they're the number one couple. I, I pinned all my hopes on them. But anyway, that is my recap. You know, I do believe the shitstorm is coming in, in the following episodes because it always does. It always does, you know. But um, that's what I'm looking forward to. But anyway, if you want to follow along, I follow this nonsense every week. But if you want to follow along with me, please subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye.